Today I'm going to show you this 50 inch Full HD budget TV from Cello and if you don't know who Cello are, they are a British company that was founded in 2001 and they're based in the north of England and they manufacture all their products right here in the UK. So I've managed to get my hands on one of the 50 inch models and I'm going to go over the unboxing, the setup, my thoughts on the styling and of course the functionality. Now for full disclosure, I did receive this TV from Cello in payment for a review, so a big thanks to Cello, but in no way is this a sponsored video. I will be entirely honest, and whether it's a positive review, you'll need to watch to find out. So you pop the top of the box and this is what you get. You get two feet, which gives you an idea of the footprint for this TV, and you also get the screws to attach the feet. You get some documentation, that includes a handy setup guide, a nice clean standard infrared remote control, so no Bluetooth point and shoot here, but you do get the batteries to power it. And of course, you get the power cord. Now this is one of many TVs that Cello manufacture, all in the UK, and they range from 20 inches to 50 inches. This particular model that I've got is the 50 inch C50 FVP. It has a maximum resolution of 1080p and is powered by NetGem TV. Now, more about that later in the review. It has apps built in which include BritBox, BBC iPlayer, Prime Video, YouTube, Rakuten and many free to air catch up services. Now I would advise getting some help with the unboxing, which as you can see I struggled with getting it out of the box, but other than that the initial setup is very straightforward. The feet simply screw into the bottom, although I have mounted my TV on a TV stand which I previously owned, and I recommend you do so as well if you're going to purchase this TV, and I will talk about why that is later in the review. Now if you are going to wall mount this TV or like me having a TV stand, doing so is very straightforward. It has the standard wall mounting screws on the back. Now talking of what's on the back, well you get two HDMI ports, a USB port, an optical port, a headphone port, composite ports, a digital audio port and an ethernet port. Now this TV does have Wi-Fi, but it's nice that you can hardwire it if you wish. This is fully loaded with free view play, which gives you over 100 live free channels plus all the free catch up services. Now it's also powered by NetGem TV, which shouldn't be confused with Android TV. Cello did in the past have TVs in their range with Android TV. Now my guess as to why they don't anymore is that Android TV is quite processor heavy or intensive with reports of more expensive TVs struggling with Android TV so maybe that has something to do with it. So NetGem TV does offer premium services such as Rakuten TV which is for TV and movies and Premier Sports. Now this Cello TV is also fully functional with Amazon Alexa voice control which gives you the ability to pause, rewind, search programs and basically have some fun with it just as you would do any other Echo Dot. Now, to get this, all you have to do is pair up with the Alexa app. It really isn't difficult at all. It's not something that I use very often, but it is nice that it's included and it is a big selling point, I must admit. Alexa, watch EastEnders. Getting EastEnders from NetGem TV. The TV does come with Wi-Fi, a TV guide and the ability to pair it with the NetGem TV app, which makes casting extremely easy easy. Now you can also use this as a second remote control and you can also record TV with the use of a USB dongle. Okay that's all the specs out of the way so let's talk about the styling of the TV. It's an all plastic design, it weighs 10.8 kilos which isn't heavy for a TV at all. It's only about 9 centimeters thick at its thickest so it looks nice mounted on the wall. Its bezels are thin enough that it looks modern but not razor thin like an OLED. All in all though, it is a good looking TV. The remote control is clean looking, functional and has quick access to NetGem TV and Freeview Plus. It's an infrared remote control as I previously mentioned which means you'll still have to point it at the TV if you want the buttons to work. Now speaking of the buttons, they are of the spongy variety but they do click which gives you that feedback necessary to know that you've successfully pressed the button. 
Now, I mentioned earlier about recommending a TV stand or wall mounting, and it's to do with the feet maybe being an issue as it's only about five centimeters high. So if you're planning on using a soundbar, it may be not high enough off of the table. It really depends on the dimensions of your soundbar. All in all though, it's a good looking budget TV and looks really nice in my family room slash office. So there are no complaints from me there. Now setting up the TV is a straightforward affair, which after inputting the Wi-Fi details involves following the on-screen instructions. Setting up Freeview is a straightforward affair too, although it's something I haven't done as I don't actually own a digital aerial. I have Sky TV and I also use an Amazon Fire Stick, so I've never needed an aerial. The TV's inbuilt interface is slick, straightforward with the options of My TV, NetGem TV and Freeview and Settings. It's easy to navigate, easy on the eye with large icons and well laid out sections. I found that NetGem TV sections could be laid out better with YouTube and Amazon Prime being more prominent than being relegated to further down. It's just a minor gripe though and more my personal preference. I would have liked the ability to rearrange the order of the sections like you can with Android TV too as well. Now the settings are basic, which is a plus for many I'm sure as setting sections can be a steep learning curve like a certain LG TV OLED, uh, which I also own. So if you're the type that likes a very in-depth complicated settings section, then you will be left wanting. Again, it's all personal preference. What I do like about it is that you can easily navigate the sections to change things to your preferences. Then if you don't like them, easily change them back. So what about picture quality? Now, if you're coming from an OLED LG or Sony TV like I am, then you will notice that these don't match up and nor should they. You'll need to spend an extra thousand pound if you want the same kind of picture. Now for the price point, the colors are bright and vibrant if you tweak the settings as out of the box they were a bit washed out for my liking. The configuration on screen is what I've found to be my liking and I would recommend this configuration. The viewing angle however is quite acute in terms of colours and picture quality so I would advise sitting straight on as much as possible. Again that's just my opinion as I notice the smallest imperfection when I'm viewing TV so please take that into account but it is there just the same. Bottom line though is that in terms of picture quality for the price you pay it is pretty decent and I'm quite happy with it. It's got a 60Hz refresh rate which is a good plus and as previously mentioned a full HD resolution of 1080p. Ok pictures out of the way let's talk about sound. Now if you look at the reviews on Amazon sound volume is quite a contentious affair. Now a lot of the reviews say that the sound is very bad and especially quiet. Now, I need to mention that I'm in regular contact with another YouTube reviewer, Lee from Lee TV, and his model is identical to the one that I've got, and his suffers from very poor sound. I also have to say that I've owned very well-reviewed, I may add, Sony TVs in the past that have also suffered from poor sound levels, and that has much to do with having to make fit speakers into very thin sachet. It's something that you have to half expect these days. I can report though that the sound from my TV is really quite decent, as I will show you now. And just to give you some perspective, this is my Echo Dot on full volume.
So perhaps the TV that Lee was giving was faulty. You should also check out his review as I always recommend watching as many reviews as possible when deciding on a particular model of TV. So I'll put the link in the description for you. Okay, for me to sum it up, sound, if you buy any modern TV, I would always recommend a sound bar at the very least. If you can and you don't have neighbors close by, I would definitely recommend an AV amp and speakers. Unfortunately, I could only achieve 5.1 surround sound through the HDMI ports and not from NetGem TV or Freeview options, which is a bit of a down point for me. But to be fair, this is more a reflection of my Onkyo amp needing an HDMI connection or optical connection assigned to a specific HDMI port for the sound to work. So maybe it is just my amp. Talking of attaching a sound bar though, as mentioned, before that it's only five centimeters high from the table if you use the feet that come with the TV. So it may be a neat finish. I don't know, it really depends on how big your sound bar is, I guess. My TV stand though is very cheap though and I highly recommend it as it's extremely well made and would survive a nuclear explosion. I would bet it's that sturdy and at only £35 it is an absolute bargain. Again, I'll put the link in the description if you're interested. So what are my thoughts overall? Well, I'm very happy with it and I have no plans to remove it from my family room. It did replace an aging decent spec LG model from about 2010, which probably, if I'm honest, had a better picture. But although it was smaller, it was a 48 inch model. With the addition of the thick bevels, it was much larger and thicker. So I'm much happier with the TV now in my family room. I think it looks much nicer. I'm also happy with the picture quality as a second TV and I think it looks very stylish. I'm satisfied with the sound if I need to use the inbuilt speakers, but I do use it primarily with my Onkyo amp connected to my 4K Amazon Fire Stick. I'd just like to add that I'm very grateful to Cello for letting me have this TV and I'd be very intrigued to see how this matches up against the rest of the range, which is quite extensive. And coupled with the fact that this is manufactured and designed in the UK, that is a big plus for me. I'm all for buying British and supporting the British economy, which at these uncertain times is something that is a big plus for me. Now, I only have one minor gripe for me, but potentially huge disappointment for others, and that is the absence of Netflix. Now, this is a mystery to me. I'm guessing it's a contractual, but I really don't know. It's just a minor problem for me as I have that already installed on my Amazon Fire TV stick. The TV does have Amazon Prime as an app. Again, I recommend using Prime if you can on an Amazon device as it runs so much smoother than any other TV that I've tested. So to sum up, if you're looking to buy British and boost the UK economy and are after a good, affordable TV with technical support based in the UK, then I would definitely give Cello Range a look. So all that's left to say is thanks again to Cello and if you like my channel, consider subscribing and clicking that bell. Stay safe and stay frosty and I'll see you in the next one.